All right, everybody. Uh, good to see you, fine gentlemen. Let's go ahead and start introducing ourselves. Philip, since you're the oldest, go ahead and get it. All right. Subtle shade? I don't know what that was, but all right, let's get it. Let's get it. How you doing? How you doing? My name is Philip Dixon. I'm the glue to this group. Um, you know, I'm just doing what I do, bringing the best opinions out here to this group, you know? Ew. Uh, Calvin, your turn. What's up, y'all? I'm Calvin McGowan. Ooh, I'm just, wow. I'm just, keeping it simple. I'm just keeping it simple. I don't have anything to add right now. I'm sorry. You got to bring some razzle-dazzle to it. Come on, Levi. Bring us home, bro. It's your boy, Levi. You know how we do it out there. You know, straight from Kansas City. Let's get it. That was <laughs> easy. That might have been worse than Phillips, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, and your host, Alan Pettigrew. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. We got a couple topics for you guys today. Um, first one is our personal favorite basketball movies of all time. And I personally feel like I got the best choices. I don't care what anybody else say. But uh, since, let's, let's go ahead and do it in reverse order. Uh, I'm going to go first. What? I'm gonna go first. first. Clownish. All right. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I, uh-huh. I'm going first. My favorite two of all time. It's a tie. Coach Carter and Glory Road. Coach Carter, just because it is the best basketball movie of all time. You got what? You got famous people playing basketball, which is kind of lame. But what okay, really matters as just, just real quick. Just what's real quick. up? We're letting everybody throw their topics out, or not throw their topics out, but throw their um, choices out. And then we have to have dialogue afterwards, because I got some opinions about everything you just said, but continue on. Okay, cool, because uh, you're not the host, so I'll do what I want. Anyway, we got Samuel L. Jackson as a coach, where he's not cussing every 15 seconds. The fact that you have Michael, I mean, not Michael Jackson, wow, Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> as a coach around kids where he is not allowed to say M effort 72 times a movie is great. That shows his range where he can go from clean acting to being Samuel L. Jackson. And then Glory Road, just because it has so much historical content and it was the first movie I ever got for my PSP back in like 2006. And I literally watched that movie, right? Literally watched that movie 57 times. A little too much, but okay. No such thing as too much when it comes to your favorite movie, bro. Okay, okay. So, who's next? Levi. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Coach Carter in uh, Loving Basketball, mainly because I just watched it so many times, and I just fell in love with both of the movies. Levi, a woman. (laughs) It's love, bro. I mean, I have eight sisters. I have eight sisters. You have eight sisters? Yes, I have eight sisters. I'm the only boy. That's yeah, crazy. Right. Okay, I, I, you honorary I don't have your hobbies, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Honorary woman. Um, is that it, Levi? Yeah, yeah, those two, yeah. All right, <laughs> Honestly, Coach Carter, I feel like I might have something else to add if I could remember the basketball movies I've watched, but it's been forever since I've really watched them. So. All right, well, me... The tie between two, hurricane season. Yeah, and he got game. Yeah, okay. Come on, okay. Come on with common. Come on, common. Not common. Queen Latifah. That's a. What's that movie that's called? a different movie. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. But he was like one common one was like one. an NBA player. And, and Queen Latifah is like a personal trainer. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Uh, trash movie. <laughs> uh, but it is what it is. That's all. Um, okay, <laughs> the only woman, the only person who will like that movie is a person with eight sisters. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, or someone who works as a part of the coaching staff. That wasn't a good movie, though. It wasn't a good movie. Like, but, <laughs> um, but anyway, he got game. It's my all-time favorite because it's, um, he personally, it's the realest movie um, of, like, the life of a high recruit going into college. It doesn't, like, there's rarely any other movies that that truly, uh, accurately 
shows that um, lifestyle and, you know, what actually goes on behind the scenes when you are of that level. And it has, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it shows of, of the examples of a lot of kids from the hood, you know what I mean? And how, like, a bunch of kids are a bunch of um, big-time schools try to, try, try to recruit them using different tactics that they believe would, uh, you know, attract hood kids and all kind of stuff. You know, there's um playing to the game. And that's the only movie. I'm, sorry, I'm not saying the whole, one of the only movies, but it is the only movie that actually represents what that is. Um, Hurricane Season, shoot. honestly, that's just nostalgia for me. Like, there's no like, there's no actual like reason or why it has to win in it. That's not a good reason <laughs> at all. But whatever. Um, but it's just like, yeah, I watched it on a charter bus going on a black college tour once. <laughs> like, it was just like that's a really good movie. Have I seen it since? No. So do I actually know if it's a good movie? No idea. But at that time and moment, at 3 o'clock in the morning, going through Alabama, I swore it was a great movie. Um, uh, but yeah, but like the, I like the more real, dirty, gritty movies. I think Coach Carter is the most overrated movie, uh, especially oh basketball. Get off, get off the podcast. Off hold podcast. up, hold up. Why? Expl- please explain why. Explain to you why. We don't care. That's why. That's why. We do not care that you think that is the most overrated movie. People yeah. died in that movie, Philip. There was a brick thrown through a man's glass window. That is one of the most important movies of my childhood, and I'm not going to let you destroy it. I'm not going to destroy it. I'm just saying it's overrated. No one, it, no it, one cares. First of all, I just want to point out. I just want to point out. There's no point to very quickly. You had a lot to say about uh, Coach Carter. But you have zero things to say about Glory Road. Why Glory Road? I told you, Glory. Like, the historical content for Glory Road was like that movie is about the first all, I think all black starting five to. I think they won the national championship that year. Great like, movie, and they did it in movie, Texas, bro. They made a good movie in context to all the other basketball movies, though. But I don't. When it's personal favorite, it does not matter. It's di- completely different if we're ranking. But to me, that is one of my favorite movies. We asked about favorite movie. We did not oh, rank. We did not talk it, about though. the best movie of all time. No, but I just don't see it though. Like I think you're the only person I know who's favorite movie Glory Road for whatever reason. Like I like, and, I, and I've seen it, but I don't. I don't know. Like for me personally, and like you said personally, you know, we're not over here. It's the best director. Like it's just not. It just doesn't. Hit, it never hit, hit me the same way. It hit you for sure. Um, Clearly, that's why know, it's my favorite. You know, operative yeah. word, my. But still, I can't shoot somebody's favorite rapper is Takashi. I still can't say he garbage. Come on now. <laughs> no, no. To you, you can say he garbage. But, I know, yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm saying to me, uh, Glory Road just doesn't hit that spot. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I'm a historian, so I figure it should hit my spot. Uh, well, I'm gonna be a historian, uh, but I, so I figure it should hit somewhere in me. But I don't know. But I will give you this though. For my own being, my favorite being, he got game. Ray Allen's acting is subpar. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, like I know that to be, I know that to be fact. Like I'm not over here just one of those like people in denial. You know what I mean? But Denzel, that was a great Denzel role. That was yeah. a great Denzel role. Um, it's really underrated because mostly black people have seen that movie. Like if you go to a white person, like who's your favorite Denzel? I can say. They're going to say, Tra- what, Training Day? You're going to say, yeah. Book of Eli? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not going to say, you know, he got game. Um, but, yeah, fantastic. I, I don't know. I, I can go on, on all day about he got game. That one part, have you, have you seen the movie, Alan? Or Duh. Alvin and Eli? But that, oh, that oh, was oh, one, of the game, uh, one of the movies that sparked my love for the uh, Air Jordan 13s. Bro, you know my number in high school was number 34 because of Jesus Shuttlesworth? Like, specifically, because huh. Judo Shuttlesworth, like, an AU, everything. That's my favorite movie, and that was the only reason I wore number 34. I didn't know that was, I didn't even know that was Ray Allen's number um, for the for the Supersonic. <laughs> I, just, I just wore it. I literally just wore it because of Judo Shuttlesworth. Uh, but that one scene where Big Tom is him driving in the car, he's telling him the people to avoid. He's talking about the drug dealers and people trying to get his money. Go on YouTube right now look at that scene. That might be one of the most realest scenes ever in movies. Not just... Uh, a basketball movie, but just like a real scene, a real movie, especially a Spike Lee movie, because Spike Lee movies always have those moments, you know what I mean? 
fire movie. Can we throw Space Jam in there? It's no, Space we Jam cannot throw like Space Jam in there. No. Uh, okay. Good. Unless uh, it's somebody's I, I favorite right okay now. With... No, we're not talking about all-time greats. Yeah. You still Jam? can't put that in the all-time great. Cause... I, I like Space Jam because, I don't know. I, I watched Space Jam like a couple months ago, maybe. Yeah. I still felt good. Right. It's the cultural relevance. It's the cultural relevance and the fact it's nostalgia for all of us. I don't know. I remember clutching a basketball watching that, sh- watching that movie as a like seven years old. Yeah, yeah, I am a cliche. It's okay. <laughs> but I remember holding the basketball watching that movie like, I know I can't do that though. It does count, but like, I don't I, I I get it. It's it's it's, it's a good movie, um, but it, it's a good it's a good solid kid specific movie. Oh like, yeah, you would put that in the same category as Air Bud, I guess. No, I mean you could put it in the same category, but it's tiers like, to this. Air Bud like, is like two like, tiers you know, like, lower. Coach Carter is like a PG thirteen movie, but it has like adult content. In yeah, it. yeah. Uh, and you know, like all these other basketball movies have like somewhat. In it, uh, but like Space Jam is a battle, it's catered, was it P rated G maybe? I don't know what it is, but Man. like it's like, is it even called it? I, I was gonna say, I think it's PG, or yeah, something. I think it's I PG. It's like super, super family friendly, you know what I mean? Yeah, so like, how, about, how about this one? I got another one, uh huh, Juana Man. How about that? Juana Man oh, is I fire, about that one. Juana oh, Man is good. fire. I will give you that one. Yeah, this is a good one. That is a good yeah. one. And we're, if we were doing the top ten list, that would be in my top ten list. Levo over here giving out the giving out the movies there, but I forgot about. Um, well, I feel like that's the only genre of movie Levo watches. Basketball. basketball movies. It's a sub genre, bro. Yeah. It's a, a sub genre. It really is though. It's such a specific genre. Levo hasn't watched any Marvel movies since 2008, but he's watched yeah. every single basketball movie that's coming out. Well, I saw the Marvel movie too. He said what? What did he say? I saw the Marvel movie. I'm ready for the next one to come out. <laughs> his favorite, his favorite part of uh, his favorite part of any Marvel movie was when uh, uh, Black Panther came back to Compton. None <laughs> 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 <Then it's> Nike. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, yeah, I do love it. There's, there's a lot of good basketball. What's that one basketball movie with the dudes from the white kids from Indiana? Hoosiers, Hoosiers, I'm so glad you brought that up. That is that is the most overrated basketball movie of all time. Have you ever watched it? Hoosiers oh. is garbage. I is promise you. Bruh, that is the filler anime. That is the filler anime of all basketball movies, bro. It is wow. absolutely okay. garbage. I mean, we definitely have excluded all white basketball movies. If you, like subconsciously, Wait. but we did. Well, uh, white basketball movies. Look at the Irish. Oh, I remember that. Wait, that isn't that the movie. one where? That's a Disney movie. That's the, okay. The, that like a, that movie's kind of kind of nice. It's, it's, a, it's a Disney Channel. What, Calvin? It's like a Disney Channel movie. It's a movie. It doesn't. It counts. <laughs> Barely. But Barely. it's because you only saw it three times. The rest of these movies oh. were all all the on all all the time. But it still counts though. It's not. Like it does, but I forgot like, about it. It's not like High School Musical where like there was like a basketball scene for one scene, but like this was like the Irish. Like he was like a lot of it was centered about him hooping. You know what I mean? Bro, Buddy was like, hooping for his family's sake. No, he wasn't. He was yes, he was, bro. No, he I'm telling you. No, he, no, no he at, you don't remember the end? He was I mean, I, he was hooping for his family's that. ability to have luck. Yes, and he had the little Irish thing, but he played. He, all he did was play high school basketball, and he had the little um. Little charm or whatever it is around his neck that let him be extra lucky. Yeah. So he's over here hitting the basketball underhanded, all kind of stuff. Like, that was a fantastic movie. Y'all don't care what y'all say. We're yeah. talking about Disney cult classic channel, like Disney cult classic Disney channel movies. That is one of the greatest by far. I'll give you that. And it's, and it's a basketball movie, I guess. No, it's definitely a basketball movie. What are other white basketball movies, though? I don't know. White men can't jump. Yeah, Zach. Air Bud. <laughs> White people do love their dogs. Um, <laughs> White people, oh, do you know one of the... Thunderstruck. Do you know... In my prime. 
Semi-pro, come on. Semi-pro. Oh, I, I never pro. did watch Semi-pro, I meant to. Bro, it's That's funny. Like, it's so funny. I never thought it was good. You said you didn't think it was I, good? I didn't think it was good. It never appealed to me. It's funny, all. though. I mean, something can be bad and still be funny. Yeah. But also, I saw it on Comedy Central, so I definitely saw the edited version, because it was, like, two in the afternoon one. So, like, I didn't get the full effect. Yeah, you didn't. You you got to see the one where... When they used to play on Spike, that's what you needed to see. When they really didn't you, care about their viewers. <laughs> that's, that's why Spike's not a town anymore. <laughs> um, that, you know, um, but I think what's that one movie? Some what do you guys just named the movie? Not Air Buzz. Thunderstruck. Not Thunderstruck. What's another white movie? Uh, I don't know. What'd you say, Levi? Winning season. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh my I, God. I watched all the basketball movies. Bro, no, there's a Jewish one. There's a Jewish one where they had like oh man, uh, my, my, my ex. I think it's my Max or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. There's, wait, there's one where, like, they get... I remember this dude was supposed to be, like, a... He used to play pro ball or something, or he used to be a coach. But they get him to coach, like, their Jewish school or... Yep, full court uh, miracle. Team or whatever. I know what you're talking about. I know, oh, I know what you're talking yo, about. My how, did, how, are we forgetting, how are we forgetting rebound with Martin Lawrence? Oh, Bruh, I was thinking about that, but I didn't want to bring it up because. Why? I like that. I, I, that's where he coached the kids team, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bring that up. He he bring the up kids team. There was that. There was that one ref. Yeah, like Mike. What are we doing now? Man, if you gonna bring that up, we're, we're going down memory lane right now. So we're doing. <laughs> hey, like Mike is fire, bro. <laughs> like Mike will always be fire. Um, but rebound. That was a that, that was a movie where like the ref had like a delayed reaction, and was, like uh, <laughs> when he like. Set a call? Oh, man, that was so funny to me. Like, that was really hilarious to me. And it had beans from even Steven in it, so. That was weird. That yeah, little weird-looking dude. Kid, man. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't judge hey. who looks at that, but, like, man, that kid is ugly. Um, uh, hey, man, it's true. You know it is. Um, but, yeah, Mike Mike. I don't, I don't know how we got this far. and didn't right. men- even mention Mike Mike. This is, hey, you know why. Uh, it's as good as it is. It is not that memorable. Okay, but guess what, though? That's fine, though. Guess what? This is, this is what I'm at. So, you guys watch Black Mirror? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so have you seen the new season? No. Mm-mm. Or the second newest season, I guess it would be now? Or like, about a year ago? Yeah. You know, okay, so, like, this is one episode where, you know, this guy, like, uh, where, like, this guy, and he, uh, like, takes the DNA of people, like, puts it to a video game. Whatever, it gets weird. Mm-hmm. But, oh, wait, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, so the main, the guy, the, the antagonist, I guess, for that episode, he is, um, I was like, the whole time watching, I was like, that guy looks really familiar. Then I was like, oh, that's a guy from Max Keebler's Big Move. But then I was like, oh, that's the the bully from uh, Like Mike also. And then I just went to theaters, and I saw this movie called Vice about Dick Cheney, about Dick Cheney mm-hmm. uh, and he's one of the main people in Vice, too. I'm like, this man's so... This man got some iconic roles under his belt. Hey, <laughs> like, oh, get my. them checks, bro. I'm like, man, but yeah, I, but just now I put together that he was a guy from Mike Mike, the bully that like didn't get adopted, so he was really that's such a sad <laughs> movie, man. That's such a sad. Those kind of movie got really sad under under undertones. Bro, it's, like, it's not even undertones. That is the main point of it. They was like, how can uh, we make this seem happy? Play basketball. I mean, but then he was it that Morris Chestnut, the one that he, uh, the one that he, um, that eventually adopted him and the white kid. Yeah, I think he was. Yep. Hey, but if y'all are having ever having a bad day, just Google um, "full court miracle." I I just put the link in the uh, in the message box. I am telling you. This dude in his banana colored suit is the funniest thing I've seen in a while, bro. It is wild. Was it a, is it a movie? Yes, bro. Yeah, Full Court Miracle is the uh, is the Disney movie where the uh, the Jewish kids were playing in like. Oh. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I haven't heard honestly. I haven't heard that movie even referenced referenced in like fifteen years. Because you, you, you're not yeah, going bro. to, bro. It's, 
Disney movies are very forgettable. Oh, they were cranking the mugs that's out. That's at... not true. That's not true. That's not true at all. Don't do that. Hey, Just for, for a certain as many movie, as many movie. ones you can name, there's way more that you've forgotten. That's not true, man. That's uh, probably the original true. ones. What do you? Original ones from the original ones from like from like two thousand to like two thousand nine, maybe two thousand eight. I'm trying to figure out when I started watching, watching Disney Channel. Like from from that like ten nine year period, there's way more that you remember that you don't remember. I guarantee. I, I guarantee, I guarantee that's I'm gonna, false. I'm gonna throw out ten right now. I guarantee you remember every single one of them. Bro, I told you, there's going to be ones that we remember, but I'm pretty sure there's more that you do not remember than there are ones movie? that you... No. Yes! I I guarantee you, bro. They okay, cranked bro, out like hundreds. I'm going to the basketball podcast. I'm going to... <laughs> like, can, can we move on to the next topic? Otherwise, we're going to be here all day talking about Disney Channel original movies. That's we, true. We can, That's for another movie. podcast. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing, but okay. It's not. <laughs> I get the point. Yeah. I get the point. My, my fault. I almost went off on a, you know, a thing. Check for that um, on uh, PG Anecdotes. We will be having <laughs> a Disney hey, <laughs> Disney Channel movie <laughs> segment blood. on PG Anecdotes. I have no blood. idea when it airs. Okay, but uh, okay. So let's move on to the next topic. Again. All right, next topic. Okay, um, again, did not write these down. So, um, best the, uh, one-on-one offensive player in the league. Who you got? Okay. Uh, Philip, go ahead. Who you got? James Harden. Why? One on one. Why? Okay, real quick. Are we talking about one on one, like at all times, or one on one, like in the context of the NBA game? No offense. What's the difference? If I if I isolate you, look. look, If you if if you say let's play one on one, what are we doing? The rec. You say let's play one on one. We're going the league. All of a sudden, there's referees on kind of stuff. It's going to be a different game. Because people, cause especially, if, especially for James Harden, it's going to be a completely different game. You know what I mean? You and don't so think like, which, that so step like, back translates like, everywhere? What's those fouls? Bro, fouls. <laughs> Bruh, if we go to the league, I mean, if if any of us go to the wreck with James Harden, or what? Oh, no, you, we, you think he's not beating us with that step back? I know no, he's taking my ankles fully with that step back. There's more to his game than that, though, when it comes to playing one-on-one in the, in the context of like, an NBA with the refs and all kind of stuff. But then, like, uh, it's going to be different, like, other, otherwise. So, like, because if, if, if we're playing, like, you know, one-on-one, like, in the practice, so, like, one-on-one, all kind of stuff, I'm going to think differently. But, like, one-on-one in the context of like, an NBA game, for what we see in the NBA game, my choice is going to be James Harden. Okay. Okay. Um... I guess. Um, Calvin, who you got? Um, come back to me. I'm, I'm thinking about this. Of course. All right, Levi, what about you? Uh, of course I'm going to go with James Harden. You know, actually, you know I'm going to go against the opposition. I'm going to go with Kevin Durant. Come on, bro. I'm gonna smart go man. Durant. Smart I'm man. I'm going to go with Kevin Durant. Smart man. You just said the opposite guys. But right? Before, before, we, we, before we launched, Levi said James Harden. But, uh, I said James Harden, bro. I mean, he took my, he took my dad, so I got to go with Kevin Durant. You can still go James Harden, bro. It's your opinion. I agree with you. I didn't take it. <laughs> I agree with you, too. I agree with you. No, you don't. You didn't take it. I, I do. If I want like the whole title, I don't agree with you, but I'm going to go with Kevin Durant for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, mainly because he has an all-around game. He's from 40. He has a post game. James Harden does not have a post game. That's one thing you could say. But the thing he does have, has, and I put myself in the rough. I'm going to go with James Harden. Freaky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with James Harden, dog. <laughs> Let us know when you're ready to decide. You said just by three times. Bro. See, I got to go with it. Calvin, you ready? Yeah, I think I'm going Kyrie Irving. Okay. That's uh... (laughs) a... Why Kyrie? Because, like, his... Because, as we mentioned earlier, there's a bit of difference when we're talking about if you're isolating them in a game or if you're going to drop them in the middle of a wreck. Like, Kyrie's game is going to be fine either way. 
Yeah. Like, unlike James Harden, a third of his points does not come from free throws. So, like, he doesn't take he doesn't take eleven free throws a game, right? No. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. So, like everything he does in an NBA game, he like he can do to you in a rank, and you you just have to deal with it regardless. Okay. All right. So I got to go with Kevin Durant. You Wait, don't. Did, what'd you say? Hold up. Didn't didn't you just didn't you just get on like didn't you just get on Levi for picking Kevin Durant? No, I got on Levi for picking Kevin Durant because before the podcast went, he chose James Harden, and then he switched up for some strange reason. Oh, okay. and switched back again. Right, flip floppy. Uh, no, I got to go with Kevin Durant. Um, he can literally do everything. Seven feet tall. Shoots from three point line mid range, gets to the rim. Uh, wish he had a better handle, but he's seven foot tall, so it doesn't really matter. He can shoot over everybody. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, from every aspect of basketball, still the best scorer that uh, I have seen since like Kobe Bryant. He's better than a prime mellow. I'm gonna be. I, I still have to. I have to agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he better. He he wins from. He wins from the three. Uh, Melo got him all day on uh, the block mid range game, and I think uh, this is just me personally. I think Kevin Durant's a better finisher, so I gotta go with uh, KD on over uh, Carmelo. Oh, God, I just think people are forget. Prime Mellow, you know what I mean? Like I think people just forget. Like, like last couple of years in Denver, early years in like uh, Knicks, like Mellow was nasty, nasty. Um, but okay, okay, I got you. Um, I don't know. I just think that James Harden can't. Like, first of all, both both these players can't can't be stopped. Well, I'm talking about ours. Kyrie just stops himself. Yeah. But like, but like Kevin Durant. And James Harden, they, they're, impo- they're impossible to guard, especially coming into the context of NBA game, right? They're literally impossible to guard. The thing about James Harden is, like, Kevin Durant kind of patented that, like, swing-through move, right? And, like, now, like, the swing-through, to make it seem like you're going to shoot from the out from, from the three that a lot of people end up doing and they end up changing the rules for it. But James Harden, how he draws some fouls, he ain't changed no rules for that, <laughs> like at all. You know, that, 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 he still gets all those calls because those rules are not going to be changed anytime soon. If they are, it's going to be the next like two, three years because they can't figure out how to change it. Uh, or else they would have done it already. Um, but yeah, both these guys can't stop. You can honestly say either one of them to tell you the truth, especially right now. You know what I mean? Um, but not. Nah, James Harden, like, what James, what Kevin DeGrant can't do, James Harden can do. What James Harden can do, Kevin Durant can't do. You know what I mean? Like, because James Harden has one of the best handles you'll ever see. Like, but not, like, crafty handles necessarily. Actually, let me take that back. It's crafty. No, I'm going to say it's crafty, but it's more like, I'm not going to dribble you around a circle. I'm just going to do, like, three, four dribbles. And just take you straight to the rim. You can't stop me going to the rim. Or I'm gonna just do two, three dribbles, and then you then go into the rim, and I'm gonna just hit you with a nasty step back. You know what I mean? It's not like Kyrie who takes like 15 dribbles. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, he's handles better. He's handles better than Durant, but Durant has a better post up game. Um, Durant has a better free throw. Not free throw. Durant has a better um, uh, mid range, but uh, James Harden has a better runner. Like it's just completely. It's it's, it's crazy. Uh, you can give and take all day with those two. Yeah. Uh, why do y'all keep bringing up the? I get why you keep bringing up the um, in the context of the NBA with the foul calls and whatnot. But realistically speaking, even if um, James Harden wasn't getting to the line like he's getting, he's still averaging like thirty a game. Like I'm looking at his stats now. Especially, let's just, even if we just go with the month of um, January, uh, he had he had a 44-point game on the third, 
and he shot nine free throws and he made eight of them. Even without those eight free throws, still 36 points. On the fifth, 38, made seven to seven free throws. Without those free throws, 31 points. Uh, he had a he would have had a 20 point game against um, Denver without the free throws. He had 20 uh, against the Bucks. He had 42 without the free throws. Still 32. Um, pretty much the same thing with uh, Cleveland. He had 11 there um, without he's scoring 32 points. So I don't why why are we bringing up the the free throw? Because in my mind, that's like the last like month whatever. Like, in my mind, I was thinking about, like, this game overall. And overall, like, like yeah, so a, lot, a lot of games, he'll go to the free throw line 11 times. He'll go to the free throw line mm-hmm. 12 times. But he won't be, but, but he won't be you know, uh, scoring 42 points every single night for his career. You know what I mean? So I'm just thinking about his career overall, not just his last month. Um, when I talk about it, really at this point I'm looking at this season in the sense that so they're like, okay, who's in the league? And, it's, and if they're in the league, it's probably a good idea to look at what they're doing right now. Um, through, the, through the season, he's at, he, go, he gets the line 11 times a game. He makes nine of those. Now, granted, and so that's almost 10, 10 points a game from the free throw line. Granted, we put any of these NBA players we're talking about in any rec, just about anywhere, and they're doing pretty much whatever they want. But that's rough, that's roughly as true from the dudes we care about as from some dude on the bench. You, you drop them in any rec league, you drop them in any, you know, on any court pretty much anywhere, and they, they're doing whatever they want. Um, so it's just like, okay, who who is just, like, how much does... They're, how much do the rules, because you're not getting those calls if you go to the rec. Like, you're not getting, like, you, those, those fouls aren't getting called. Like, a lot of those fouls aren't getting called. You, you play a random pickup game. So, it's just, so mine is just kind of like, who's, tra- who's kind of does, how much does what you currently do in a game translate to just in general? Like, if you're, if you're not necessarily getting those calls, how much does your game, like how much, how much does that affect what you're doing? And at least mm-hmm. with Kyrie, it doesn't affect it that much. He's not getting, he's honestly not getting to the line like that, which is kind of strange, but okay. So maybe he, I just have to talk in a minute. Oh no, a lot of little guys in the good little realm don't, don't get a lot of calls for whatever reason. It's like real like that. You know what I mean? Unless you're going to the hall, unless you're going to the um, the realm like Dwayne Wade. But Dwayne Wade also has to wear like a football pad hmm. to go to the rim so hard. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't know. It's, a, it's like a weird thing when it comes to little guys going to the rim. But James Harden is a horse. James Harden is a big. He's a big guy, yo. And the, and the weird thing about him though is that I noticed. But James Harden can jump, right? He has, he's like legit, like a thirty-five inch vertical. But he, a lot of times he uses his vertical like horizontally on like euro steps instead of just like you know, in a vertical way, like everybody else does. But, like, I don't know, the way he makes his, the way he's translated his game to, like, do his own bidding in, whatever, in, the, in the game and just, like, you know, I don't know, translate the game and the rules of the game in a different way, it's honestly amazing. Hey, I got a question. Um, for James Harden, when do you guys remember they started complaining about him getting to the line so much? Two, two, two years ago? Two years ago? Okay. I think so. You can't even blame it on Mike D'Antoni because I'm looking through um, his uh, career log. And since 2015, 20, no, the 2014, 2015 season, he's been getting to the line 10 times a game. Like, <laughs> like. Like, I don't know why it's just now become an issue because he's, he's literally been doing his no. own career. Even the even the first year, it was like, it was nine, like, it was nine yeah, look, a game. Looking at it, as soon, really, it started as soon as he got to Houston. Yeah. yeah but that's true. also because he got the ball more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very true also. Uh, he does have the ball a whole lot. But, like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of other people that go to the rim as much as he does, but, like, they ain't getting no calls at all. And they actually get hit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I 
like a like a Le, like a LeBron James, for example. But LeBron, but James James Harden can tend to sell calls. LeBron James is too big to sell calls. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> like that's, like he just too. Yeah, it's not. It's gonna it's gonna come off him a little bit different when he gets hit in the head than when somebody <laughs> even slightly smaller gets hit in the head. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's why LeBron, I, I think that's why LeBron has has to sell himself so much. Has to like call for calls and all that kind of stuff. Because he won't get them. Because he's a monster. <laughs> that must be the worst, bro. Thank God for being 5'9 and 120 pounds, bro. Even though I never went to the free throw line. <laughs> oh, I love to say play. That's not true. I played. I done, um, I didn't do a lot. I didn't shoot the ball. But we, we're not talking about me. We're talking about the best offensive <laughs> players in the league. <laughs> I, was uh, you're about, I was hoping you were about to like, try to... Uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. You're trying to, uh, you know, trying to look out for yourself. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm not worried. I'm, I'm all about the self body. deprivation, bro. It don't really matter to me. I'll make fun of myself yeah. in a heartbeat. I ain't got nothing else to yeah. lose. Okay, I got <laughs> But, um, yeah, so we, we're going with James Harden, even though I personally feel like it's not James Harden. I think we are. Yeah. Thank you, James Hart. Hey, we we really didn't talk enough about Kyrie. Why you, why'd you choose Kyrie, Calvin? <laughs> I, I only asked him that because he's frozen. <laughs> You're a child. You're a child. I mean, I don't know. I, you know. You know how sometimes you watch a guy's game, mm-hmm. but like they're good, but like they leave a bad taste in your mouth. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I could completely see if someone ever decided to say Kyrie Irving is everything wrong with basketball. I could completely you know, see why somebody would say that, but they would also be like 75. Uh, no, like Kyrie, like he, I like, yeah, I acknowledge he's a good player. So like, there's just something about his game that I'm just not a really big fan of for whatever reason. I don't know why, but that, but I have that big problem with Donovan Mitchell. I am not a Donovan Mitchell fan at all. What's whoa, 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 whoa. What's going I'm on? I'm here. Keep talking. I don't know. Like, just something about his game, just like, I don't want to say it's, it's just off. It's just like, I'm just like, what? Like, I, I don't know. His game is not, his game doesn't trans. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know, I don't even know how to even, like, word it. Because it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth when I watch his game. It's just like, I don't know. Like, but, like, I love Jason Tatum's game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know. Don, Donovan Mitchell is weird to me. I'm just not a big fan of him whatsoever. It really sounds... He is, he is one of... He's going to be one of five players. One of five or six players that are going to average 20 points for the first two seasons in the NBA. Yeah. I, but also, you played for also you played for Utah Jazz. Yeah, I just think you like smooth basketball players more than like uh, like people who look like they just play effortlessly. Because even when Jason Tatum was like, in, you said what? Players is Lonzo Ball. If that was true, he wouldn't be one of my favorite players. Because a lot of his a lot of his stuff is work ethic. It's hard work. I, I oh, you said Lonzo Ball work ethic. A lot of his thing is work hard in the league right now, at least. I mean, that's that's all he does, but it looks smooth when he doesn't. Like, there's there's nothing, like, herky-jerky or, like, physically imposing about the way Lonzo Ball plays. He's just kind of out there, and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm really long, and I can pass. Like, there's, he's so unassuming, bro. Yeah, that's true. Um, that, that is true. I mean, I guess, I guess you could say that. But I'm just like, but, Ky- but Kyrie smooth as I don't know what though. It's not. It's, it's loud. That's mm-hmm. that's all his like. His game is loud. Like him scoring twenty points is like most people, especially if it's a highlight field night. It's like somebody else scoring forty. It's a lot of highlights. You're going to see something on every single play, whether he makes it or misses it. It's going to be a loud event, and he has to do a lot to score. He's well, like you were saying; I, I he's taking like fifteen the, dribbles to get a shot I off. I tend to like the. Uh, that's true. I tend to like the 
that, you know, he got a silent 20. He got a silent this. He got a silent that. The intangible type players. Kyrie, Kyrie's game is not intangible at all. Dun, 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 Mitchell's game is not intangible at all. Yeah. It's very loud, as you okay. said. So, yeah, that's accurate. I got a question for you. You have to like Mike Conley. Who, me? Yes. Yeah. I don't watch the Grizzlies enough to too. Like, but you never watch Mike Conley in the playoffs in the past? Uh, I do watch Mike Conley in the playoffs. Oh, okay. He's, he's okay. like whatever. He's like whatever to me. Like, I don't dislike him. I don't like him. He's just kind of a player in the league that exists. You know what I mean? Um, there, though. <laughs> I don't know. But, like, when that, that was it two years ago when he played San Antonio? And it was him and Kyrie, or not him, Kyrie. Him and Kawhi Leonard going back and forth. Like, at the very end of the game. Uh, the playoff game. I don't even remember that. That was... Say again? I don't remember that. Oh, fantastic, fantastic game. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard scored like 12 or 15 points in a row. And like how they just go back at him. And Kawhi Leonard was like guarding Mike Conley. It was like one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. But, um, that's what I mean. But like, you know, Mike Conley's been around for a long time. But like, I don't know. I have no real opinions about Mike Conley. If he just exists, he's good on the Grizzlies. You know how every, every bad team or every like, Mid major team has mid major. God, the boys mid major. <laughs> middle of the market team has those like uh, those good players on them. Uh-huh. Bad, like, franchise players. Like, yeah, Mike Conley's one of those guys. And he's like, yeah, he's cool. But apparently, he's Kanye West's favorite player. So, mm. this is the first I've heard of that. So, okay, it's true. Like Mike Conley in an interview said that. One day, one night he was sleeping, he woke up to a phone call, and it was just Kanye. And Kanye was like, bro, I love your game. You're one of my favorite players. They started talking to his ear about how much he loved his game. And my Kanye was like, halfway asleep. <laughs> okay. Oh my like, I, it was a really random interview that I saw of Mike Conley, too. It was like, okay, whatever. Man. Oh, wow. Yo, if you look up Mike Conley in high school compared to Mike Conley today, he looks exactly the same. He just looked like he got a woke hairstyle. That's it, bro. He's, he's J. Cole. Um, <laughs> there is a, um, I, had, I went to college, actually, with the guy who went to, who went to the same high school as Mike Conley. Did you go to high school with him? No. Of course not. The same high school, so that not <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing. Okay, never mind, but... He's now a Christian rapper. Shout out to Omaj. That's nice. Um, <laughs> all right, this uh, this is this topic is dying. Let's go ahead and push to the next. Okay. In okay. we okay, have uh, a what's it least deserving all star vote? Yeah, or something. I wanted to make it a real or fake, but nah, I feel like we got way too many opinions for uh, real or fake. Uh, y'all got the yeah. list up in front of you. No, I don't. Just say my loud. Okay. I'll say it out loud if you're ready. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, we're start. We're gonna start with the West on the front court side. Number one in votes, LeBron James. Number two, Luka Doncic. Number three, Paul George. Number four, Kevin Durant. Number five, Anthony Davis. Number six, Stephen Adams. Number seven, Nikola Jokic. Number eight, Kyle Kuzma. Number nine, Draymond Green. And number 10, DeMarcus Cousins. This doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. I'm, no, I'll, well, that doesn't, but I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking out loud. What were, what were you saying? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> to me. Did you, did you get the first 10? Yeah, that's the first 10 for the front court player. So that's your small forward, power forward, and center. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you're just giving them the list? No, yeah. I was just, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're doing, you're doing West first, then we're, then we're going to discuss this, then go on to the East? Yeah. And if uh, y'all want to do guards and front court players at the same time, we can do that too. Okay. I just have to get mine out real quick and I'll listen to everybody else's because before I forget, because I don't have the list in front of me. Um. So, look at Doncic. I watched him recently, and I do admit, he is a dog. Like, he has that, like, he'll make a shot, a big shot. You can just, like, you know how you sometimes you see in the eyes? Like, oh, he's, he's 
he bought that action. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think that he is the next great white hope <laughs> because there's no actual there's no actual um, white Americans that are actually good at basketball right now in the NBA. Um, I, I was about to say those guys. He's not, he's not even white anyway. No, he's he's not Slovenian. What are we talking he's, about? He's, he's, he's white. He's just not American. Yeah, he's a European. He's a European. Yeah. But, yeah. but as long as you look like them, they will use that. Um, you know what I mean? Because you rarely hear any unit. But, but so I think he's getting pumped up a little too much so far. So far. But he is very, very good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny that whatsoever. But I think he's what is he averaging 19 points, whatever it is. Mm. So I think the media, if you watch ESPN, Fox One, they're like doing a little too much with him. But like, yeah, he's good. Um, does he deserve, deserve to be an All Star? No. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I gotta agree with you one on that one. Um, yeah. Derrick Rose deserves to be an All Star, but not a, but not a starter. No, 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 no. He does not deserve to be an All Star, bro. But not a starter. I think he does, but not a starter. Especially you see, like, I don't know. This comes from a guy who watches the Minnesota games, though. So like, you see how he impacts the game otherwise, though. Um, he does a lot of other different things. Uh, you watched him last night against Dallas. Uh, you watch his defense, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's really good. Um, he Most times he wasn't, in the course of the last couple of minutes, he was not guarding Lucas Doncic. It was Andrew Wiggins getting busted up by this <laughs> man. Um, but I think he deserves to be uh, not a starter, but you know, people love Derrick Rose, so he's gonna. I mean, he's probably gonna be a starter. Um, and I think you said Demarcus Cousins too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That gives me a headache. I don't even want to <laughs> discuss it. Uh, but yeah, no, I think uh, yeah, James Harden definitely deserves to be the starter. Though. Like, there is no way James Harden won't be a starter. I mean, we haven't starter. got to the guards yet, but he is not. Um, he's number three, so he is not the starter. I will throw up. And okay, your boy uh, Rosie Poo is number two. That's crazy. Hey, man. You got fans. Honestly, a lot of the all-star fan voting is if, do they like your game or not? And in a lot of the dialogue that goes on in these talk shows, because a lot of people just get their sports from ESPN. A lot of these sports analysts, they're like, yeah, Jim's Harden. But, and all of a sudden they put these butts behind him, and people are like, oh, man, I don't like his game, because they're like, listen to other people's opinions for James Harden. All this because it's not a, it's not a sexy game. All of a sudden, you know, Derrick Rose. Everybody's always liked his game, even though his game's completely different now. People always like him and his game. So like, people are gonna vote for him more because the dialogue around him is a little more positive. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, but, but I also think that fan vote shouldn't count for as much as it does. So it's like fifty percent, right? I should be less. Yeah, I was. I rem- when I heard Luka Doncic was number two. I immediately, my th- head was like, yeah, fans almost should get no say whatsoever, bro. Dwayne uh, Wade's on the list also. Yeah, Dwayne Wade's... Uh, on the list. Yeah, so it, it, makes, yeah. it makes it really hard for me to be like... Because I, I get it that you... It's nice to have the fans say something. It really means a lot to have your voice heard. It's a great way to build your audience. But nah, man... Y'all remember the year Zaza almost got in? Well, he didn't yeah. really have like a legitimate chance, but he was getting votes, like was, serious yeah, votes. That, like that was that so was agitating. Year, that, was, that was that was the year where like, Golden State almost had them all in, right? Yeah. That was the same year almost committed suicide because of because of him do, be, almost being an All Star game. Hey, bro, you, um, you can't say that. Out. You know you can't say that, right? <laughs> I, 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 I can say whatever <laughs> I want. Uh, ain't no problem. All right, Derrick Rose. Um, <laughs> Are we going to talk about that? No, we're not going to talk about that. No, not right now, but later on. No, we're not going to talk about that. Why not? I have. I feel too strongly about that. But whatever, whatever, whatever. Alan, just don't throw those things at me because you know I'm going to react. Um, but I don't know what to say anymore. Never mind. Go, Alan. Don't all be right. all flustered. <laughs> but I got to agree with you. I don't think Luka Doncic should get this many votes for a starter. But uh, somebody made a really good... Um, observation this isn't this is like worldwide voting so the fact that he's been killing overseas for the past 16 years in not only his home country um but in spain yeah and the fact that they they travel all over 
Europe hooping, and he's been dominating for like the past three years. He's going to get all these votes, bro. So pretty much, he is doing to the NBA All Star Game what Barack Obama did to the presidential election. All these Eastern Europeans in the United States of America are probably just voting for him just because he's Eastern European. Um, he, he's one of them. He's really, really good. You know what I mean? Just like a lot of black people went out for the first time and vote for Barack Obama to be president of the United States. Pretty much the same thing. Hot take ish. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I, kind of. Uh, I hear a lot of hesitance. Yeah, uh, cause just, you know why. You know why we had a lot of hesitance as a unit. I don't, but continue. That's that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, yeah. I just wonder how many of these people are actually going to get into the All-Star game. I think the... I. From the West, I can see the top six in the front court if Steven Adams squeaks in. Uh, if he gets over Jokic, I'd be kind of upset because Jokic is, like, amazing. And I would love to see him with that much talent around. I feel like that would be pretty entertaining. But, uh, yeah. Kind of question? What's up? Is Jokic really amazing? As a passer, yeah. Okay. I Because I think you got to get really specific with his uh, – with his um, compliments, because he's supporting cast. Let's not get it wrong. He has a lot of role players, but he got some really good role players. So, that's so like, they make him look a lot, sometimes a lot better than what he is. Passing-wise, don't get me wrong, very, very good. But otherwise, you got to guard up the other people so he just leaves them open to do whatever. Like, he's, he's, he's a good player, but I don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. Yeah, I actually think it's the opposite, of, opposite way around. Because he's he's getting so much attention. It's not like he's a scorer or anything. But you, if you give him space and he has the ball, he's going to find the right person. And for some strange reason, like people almost try to double team him knowing that he'll find the right person. But I guess you always do that when you see a seven-footer around the basket. But um, like he's, he's going to find the open man, like no matter who's supposed to be guarding him. So... And I know, okay. you, I know you saw like the full court, full court pass the other day where he just kind of like not flicked his. That's not a big deal, bro. Th- that is a big deal, bro. Literally, Lonzo Ball made the exact same pass from an inbound play to my. Okay, you froze, but um, even when Lonzo Ball did his, I, that's I can a, choose like, which position, show from which individual, bro. Yeah, even, even Lonzo y'all, Ball, that's still amazing, bro. Y'all still just, but they, but they don't show it. You know what I mean? And see, it, it was a father pass, and they don't show it. They, yes, they because this, this man is seven foot tall. That's why. Yeah, we we don't expect stronger. centers to do that. And so, what heavy. does that mean? And he's heavy set. He's heavy. Come on, man. He's stronger. He's more durable. That hasn't been doing anything, but it's true. He's stronger, and he's a good passer. You can make that pass easily. That's not a hard pass to make. It's harder to pass. It's hard, that's a hard pass to make if you're, if you're smaller than he is. He's a monster. Look at him. Listen to the thing from the Goonies. <laughs> Just for uh, the context of having the numbers, he's currently averaging 19.2 points, uh, one, one and a half steals, 7.6 assists, 10.2 rebounds, shooting 50% from the field. That, uh, that hasn't been done in a while. Like It's been a long time since that has been done from the center. Only person I can think is Kareem, really. That's only Kareem wasn't passing that much. I mean, but when he had that supporting pass, I think he was that. I, I, when he got I'm old, he might have been passing. I'm not even going to try to front. I don't know Kareem's whole stat line. I'm not going to try to front with you on that one. Yeah. So, like, you might be right. I might be wrong. I have no idea. No. But when he was in Milwaukee, I don't, I don't think he was passing like that. That's when he was getting all them buckets. That's true. Uh, but it's just, I don't know. Yanchez also has a ball in his hands a lot. I don't know. It's, it's, and his game's different. Most centers we know in the NBA, they're... They're not his, his, his game's different. His game's very European to me, by the way. But like, if you put him up against Joel and B, like Joel and B is going to be more, uh, you know, score eccentric, and a lot of other centers going to be more scoring eccentric. Except you're, unless you're Rudy Gobert, then you don't have that ability. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But he he had a smooth game. Yeah, don't get me wrong. But I just thought he's not as fantastic as everybody's pumping him up to be. Yeah. All right. Was uh. Unless you guys had anything else you want to say, let's go ahead and move over to the guards. Uh, 
Wait, and, can we say who we thought was the most overrated and all that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. who, who you got for most Well, overrated? if we're just talking in the front court for the West, the fa- I, I feel like you said it already, the fact that DeMarcus Cousins is getting votes. Not that he's probably not going to come back and be a good player, but it's just like he hasn't played all season. Yeah. So, yeah. He might not even get, be able to get to play. I mean, hopefully he'll be back pretty soon, but I mean, wonder if he doesn't get he can get to play. You yeah, know what I'm They're talking about having him in the starting lineup, so I think he's going to get that PT. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the top 10 for the, the guards they got Steph Curry, Derrick Rose, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Clay Thompson, Damian Lillard, DeMar DeRozan, Lonzo Ball, Devin Booker, Chris Paul. And Lonzo Ball didn't need to be in there. And Chris Paul has been yeah. injured half the season. Come on now. <laughs> I have to agree with both of these. Clay Thompson. I don't think he should be up there. I get that he's still averaging pretty good numbers. But the thing that makes Clay Thompson worthy of being an all-star is his shooting. And he's been kind of struggling, even though he's had bursts where he's just kind of like caught on fire. Can I just say, though, that he's bar, that, that bar in the interview he gave where he was like, uh, I mean, who's going to teach me? I mean, who, who am I asking about shooting advice? I mean, Larry Bird, Ray Allen, Reggie Miller. That, that's like it. That was such a bar. Like, that was such a humble stunt. That was so crazy. Bro, like, no. Oh, that was so dope. There's nothing humble about the way Clay Thompson um, answers questions. I'm really surprised that we don't talk about that enough, but that's a cocky dude. And I understand why he's that cocky, but... That's, that's- that's what makes me like him way more than Steph Curry. See, Steph Curry over here trying to be all Mr. F- Mr. Family Guy, <laughs> which is like not a bad thing, but like that's what I'm. I'm oh, this about. guy's a hater. This guy out of here. <laughs> hater. I'm not trying to family. Shoo. Oh, um, but like exactly, you're a hater. No, it's coming coming from the guy with the family. Um, but like I'm I'm just like Clay Thompson's like he the, the way he does interviews. Like you, we should be talking about his interviews way more. Like just like you said, because. He be saying some stuff off the wall that, like, you, like, did he really just say that? But, like, <laughs> unless you watch interviews, you will never know. Yeah, bro. It's, it's hilarious. If we did, like, a, we might have to do this for a later topic, the most unassuming team, he's definitely on it, bro. Most unassuming team. Most unassuming. Okay. You, would, you would never think anything bad about him, but, nah, bro, you definitely, you All definitely right. up to no good. But I don't In think he's in his head, he definitely thinks he's the best player on the team. I'm pretty sure he says it out loud every once in a while. But he mumbles I'll, it, and everybody thinks it's a joke, but he's it's, dead ass. Actually, before Kevin Kevin Durant on the team. Like, he's over here probably talking dirty to Steph behind closed <laughs> doors. Yeah. I don't think... I know he he's definitely probably told Steph, you know I can shoot better than you, right? Steph was like... Steph, Steph was like, I mean, I don't... I mean, maybe... I mean, maybe. <laughs> Right. Kill him childish, but Clay Thompson's like over here just not too bad than you. That, that, that's just me expressing my Steph Curry hate. My bad. Yeah, it's okay, bro. Hey, I got a lot of hate for Steph Curry too. I don't know why, but I just do. I appreciate him as the only one. Yeah, bro. It's something about he he just rose too fast for me, bro. It was just like, <laughs> no, it was literally like, oh, he has glass ankles to, he's the greatest shooter of all time. He's the no, best he player in the passed, NBA. And I was like, what? He Jason Terry. Bro, yeah, third all time. He's, he's 30. Hey, you know what I think is the funniest thing about it, though? The gap what? between first, second, and third is crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big. But you know, but if you want to look at the stats, hey, Calvin, mm-hmm. can, you just, can you do this for him, for him real quick? All look right. up the stat between assists of Jason Kidd, who's second, and John Stockton, who's first. Yeah. Just like, just like the, just throw, 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 throw the number out there. Yeah, that's crazy too, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, assists in a career? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
to be completely honest with you, you could do stats in a uh, you could do it in a single season they, too. Do we want per it's game still crazy. Or just like total assists, total total the, the total assist number. Uh, okay, that might take because that wasn't what I. There's no list like automatically. It's like mm-hmm. most I, of all. Like time. I'm I'm looking at the per game right now. Oh okay. Yeah, I was just I thought you were gonna go up the list like most assists of all time and you get like the first, the second, the third, you know, the whole shebang. Yeah. I got it. It's okay. uh John Stockton at fifteen thousand eight hundred and six, Jason Kidd at twelve thousand ninety one. What? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear it again? John Stockton at fifteen thousand eight hundred and six versus Jason Kidd at twelve thousand ninety one. <laughs> Yo, what? That's crazy. Yeah, bro, it's that's crazy. Yeah, like that's like one of those stats that like you don't foresee nobody um, passing any time up. No, nah, because you you would just have to stay in the league for so long. Because I think John John Stockton played for like twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. And, and giving out assists the entire time. Is it what? And no, like just giving out assists the entire time. That's it. And it also helps that he played it with like the fourth higher score of all time too. Like, oh, that definitely helps. They were yeah. good for each other. They were, they were good for each other. Yeah, no, Carl Malone is number two. Yeah, they were really good for each other. You didn't give them a tip, but you know, you got to be on the top books for all time. What? Hey, we we can't hear you, bro. You super muffled. It's fine. My my recording is in the same matter. Like you in the studio or something. Bro, we cannot hear you. Like. <laughs> oh, I was laying on top of my uh, microphone. My fault, dog. Don't do that. <laughs> and no, uh, if we are being realistic, number one on like all of the major stats. That gap is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, Hakeem to uh, Matumbo, 3,830 to 3,289. That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Continue. Um, Stills, John Stockton again at 3,265 compared to Jason Kidd again at 2,684. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy, yo. Rebounds. Oh, still, yo. Rebounds is uh Wilt Chamberlain at twenty three thousand nine hundred and twenty four, almost as many girls as he slept with. Uh, <laughs> Bill Russell. <laughs> 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 yeah, <damn. laughs> Bill Russell at twenty one thousand six hundred and twenty. And so then like, so those stats will never get passed up, ever. Oh yeah, number one, no, bro, because you have to be ridiculous. And yeah, as a rebounder against, for that. You're going to be playing against 5'10 white guys <laughs> your entire career. <laughs> Bob Havlicek. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, scoring is, that's a gap too. Like you got to have uh, like a 30 point season to but think it, close that's that. All, that's all changing because of the three point line now. Like the three point line, that like pretty much is going to like make that whole list like change really quickly. That's uh, really, really notice- I think the, as far as I'm, I think, realistically speaking, um, LeBron James is going to be the last person in probably, let's say, the next 10 to 15 years to get in that top five. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. He'll be the last person within the next 10 to 15 years to get in the top five. The only other person I can see getting in there. Steph Curry. I don't think Steph Curry's getting in there. Literally, Steph Curry just got 15. Steph Curry Curry's? just got 15,000. When? Like, this season. He just got in the 15,000 club. How about Kevin? That's true. Because, look, he's going to eventually, because he's, he's a guard, he's going to eventually slow down. Oh, and yeah. When he slows down, when he slows down, them guards are going to be picking up D on him, and he won't be getting those same shots off. No, you know what's gonna happen. He's gonna turn into uh, Ray Allen. No, his ankles aren't good enough to catch the ball and shoot. To cut, <laughs> and Ray Allen, Ray Allen was 
one of the most fit players to ever be in the NBA. Bro, I, I know what you're saying. Steph Curry but looks you... like he still has baby fat. <laughs> Bro, I, I completely get what you're saying, but you do know that uh, I think it was like they did they were when they were tracking how much people ran around, like the the court. I think it's like Steph and Clay were like one and two. They were doing like three miles a game, and that's well, like two and a half miles a game. And that's a little farther than Ray Allen was running around, especially in his older years. So if they can, let's just say they go to one and a half miles, they're still, they're going to be good. Especially uh, right. Steph. I know Clay will, but I don't know about Steph. I think Steph is going to be good. Oh, no, I don't know about Steph. Look, look only time will tell me things. Only time will tell. That is very true. But um, to answer your question, Levi, Kevin Durant is 37 all-time with 22,098 points. How old is Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant is like 28, 29. I thought he just turned 30. Oh, uh, let me check. Yeah, yeah he's 30. Yeah, he's 30. Oh, and he's, seven, wait, you said 22,000? Yep. He's 7,000 points higher than uh, Seth Curry? Yeah. Dirty. Yeah, he did, but Steph, oh, Steph Curry was injured, and Steph Curry had to. Okay, I got you. That's, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Steph Curry is at fifteen thousand three hundred twenty-eight. Mm, well, let's just say I hope Kareem stays up there for a minute because rebounds. The only person who can rebounds is Andre Drummond. <laughs> And that's Andre Drummond's not going to do that. I, I can see goes, Andre Drummond. I think Andre Drummond becomes top five by the end of his career. Uh, Where is he? Hold on. What's he at right now, Alan? Since you're looking, looking at the stuff, too. Uh, let me see. Um, let's see. Total rebounds, career. Uh, okay, I got it. He's at 129 all time right now for a career. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he's getting in, to be honest he with you. He's down 6,787. Wait, he's at 129? Yep. Like, right, rebounds ever? Like, over his career, yeah. Dang, that's little. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, the top Wait. five, to get in the top uh, five, you have to get 16,213. Who's number five? M- Moses Malone. Okay, so never mind. <laughs> yeah. Everybody who in it is like, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, there's no way. <laughs> there's absolutely no way. Yeah. Like, okay, first of all, can I just say this real quick? Who's up? Actually, no, I can't say this real quick because it, it's on a completely different topic. Continue on. Okay. But uh, to get back to the topic at hand, um, front court voting in the East, actually, there's, the East is the sensible conference. I like this. Giannis is number one. Number two is Kawhi. Number three is Joel Embiid. It gets kind of funny at four with Jason Tatum. Then number five, Jimmy Butler. Number six, Blake Griffin. Seven, eh, Vince Carter. Eight, Gordon Hayward. I don't know what they're doing. Nine, Pascal Siakam. I like it. Ten, Al Horford. You say Gordon Hayward? Yeah, Gordon Hayward at eight. Why? I don't know. I really because don't know. People, no, you said one name that didn't make any sense. I'm pretty sure you said like five names that didn't make any sense. But most of that list is just trash. So it is what it is. I don't know. Right. The list is solid at the in the top three. Like yeah, that makes sense. Then, that's not most of the list though. Most of the list is after the top three. Yeah, but the top three only top three are the only ones that really count. Well, I'm not really. Is it what? I'm upset people are on consideration. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gordon Hayward, that's a, we- that's a weird one. Al Horford is a weird one, too. He's not even... He's having an off year. Yeah. Uh, the, only, the only one I like that shouldn't really be on here is Pascal Siakam. Just because he's... I really like him. He's fun to watch. He reminds me of, like, oh, yeah. a, a extremely coordinated version of uh, uh, my boy Grant on OKC. Oh, okay. Yeah, like if Grant was like super coordinated and had like ball skills, he'd be Pascal Siakam. They said Grant scored a career high twenty four points the other day. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did not realize how much basketball Vince Carter has played. I'm sorry. Yeah, he been. Oh, yeah. Bro, he's been in the league since we were in. Di- well, I was in diapers. The rest of y'all was like toddlers and whatnot. Uh, yeah, like four or five. I was grown. When he got in the league, I hope not. Like <laughs> you were yeah. grown in '98. Oh wait, I wasn't in diapers no more. I was in big boy draws. <laughs> No, nah, you was, you was in diapers. Don't lie. I wasn't. In, <laughs> hey, chill out, bro. Actually, no, I wasn't in diapers. I, I don't was in diapers until he was seven. Um, <laughs> Shut up. Oh, Levi's life is real. Um, it's it's weird that I don't I don't like sympathy votes for all stars. Like, don't don't have Vince Carter in there. Thank you, right. thank you. That lifetime achievement award. I hate that. Don't use that as an all star voting because some. For some reason, when we look back in history, and we're like, they had that many All Stars. Like Kobe, Kobe has an inflated number of All Star votes, uh, All Star appearances. Those last three should not be real things, and even Kobe agrees that those last three should not be real things. But Kobe was all right getting that paycheck, though. Of course, look, I'm never <laughs> look. I'm a believer in you getting your paycheck at all costs, but I am not. In a, don't get achievements at all costs. That's weird. Unless you like, unless you're strictly striving for it, and you are actually standing up against your competition, nah, bro. Kobe was, Kobe was not that guy. And neither I mean, is Dwayne Wade, and neither is Vince Carter. Not today. Yeah, I mean Dwayne Wade's probably the best of all of them right now, especially you know what I mean. But like, Dwayne Wade is still like, right now, boo boo. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. They got him over uh, Victor Allen Depot, which is grinding my gears, bro. Ugh, grinding my gears. Yeah. Victor and they, Oladipo. Look, tell me why they got yeah. Goran Rodgers in here for the guards at number nine. Why is he getting votes, bro? He's always been getting votes, though. He's always been up there. Well, and that is an like issue. Yeah. That is a, I mean, That I'm has like, been an issue for me for like two seasons. I think people like his game and how he plays, man. I think that's what he is. He's a dog out there. He's a dog, man. He plays like a dog. I got a question for you. Do you think this is another case of uh, he's known internationally, so that helps a lot? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Because he, 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 he the man in these streets back home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Lin's getting votes, which is upsetting. Yeah. I don't really know how he's going to ask you like, what's Jeremy Lin been doing? I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know at all. He's been playing as well. I mean, he's been playing a star point guard position, but he's not superstar. He's not an all-star. Yeah, yeah these, these aren't all-star numbers I'm looking at. Like, what yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, Zach Levine is like number That's the Asian people seven. going out for the guy. <laughs> I'm telling you, it really is. Okay. Uh, ben Simmons needs to be hired too, as far as I'm concerned. All right, who who would you have, who would you replace Gordon Hayward like with? Who would you replace him with? Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> At number, I would. I know this isn't saying a lot, and the team is terrible, but I would rather see Don Collins get votes than Gordon Hayward. <laughs> Don Collins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm bad you laugh at that hard, Levi. Have you watched have you watched Don Collins play this season? Yeah, I, I like him. Yeah, I like him. He's athletic, man. No, no, don't don't, don't try to backpedal now because you was laughing hard. Nah, nah, <laughs> man. Just, I like him, bro. I like him. I like him. Mm-hmm. I've been watching him for a couple of years now, bro. I'm just not a big fan. Oh, okay. Big fan. Oh, really? Where he go to school Actually, at? He's Actually, nuts. Don Collins. <laughs> But he's averaging 19 and 10 this season. That's solid. Bruh. And he's, solid. and he's giving you, like, three highlight real plays a game. Easy. Like, between, I don't know who's constantly passing him these bad passes where he has to reach, like, pass his butt crack to throw these holes in. But, uh. Whoa. <laughs> no. No, you, you go to the Traveling Hoopers uh, Twitter page, and I guarantee you, Every single game that he plays, he is on there. Because he's, he's reaching, like, he's doing, I was about to say Vince Carter level dunks, but I'm lying. But he's 
he's doing all star level dunks. Well, so why do you think he doesn't, he's not getting that? Because uh, the team is garbage. The yeah, team is garbage. Yeah. It uh, Atlanta is not in a big market. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, stop talking to me, bro. <laughs> yeah, but uh, y'all guys got anything else? I think it's about time uh, to wrap I, it up. I hate. Okay, okay. I was waiting for us to get to the end because I got something to say. I keep Stephen A. Smith's garbage. He said that um, Zion. What do you say? Zion Williams is the best prospect coming to the NBA since, uh, who, who was it? Best NBA prospect coming to the NBA since, I can't remember who it was. Probably I, think it was Kevin Durant. I think it was Kevin Durant. It was, it was somebody that was like 2000s, right? Like 2000, whatever it is. But in my head, I was like, yo, I think it was is he forgetting about Ben Simmons? When Ben Simmons was coming out of LSU, they were saying this exact same thing. Ben Simmons was a franchise changing, once in a generation changing. Like, can we not say once in a generation until the generation's over? No, um, we. I feel like we can say uh, once in a generation talent. Considering if you if you look back at it, two thousand three had what five? Well, let's be realistic. Three generational guys at their peak. Dwayne Wade was generational. He's going down as one of the best shooting guards of all time. We got number, number, LeBron number. James going down as one of the best uh, players of all time. Then you got um, Carmelo Anthony going down as one of the best scorers of all time. So okay, but each, each generational generational is different than once in a generation. Yeah, I can agree with Phil on that one. I once in a generation is way more specific. Yeah, way generational way is like, oh, they're just a talent. This is a once, and this is a once in a generation player. I'm like, Zion hasn't even stepped a foot in the league yet. He's a one time You said the same thing about Ben. They say the same thing about somebody every year. No, Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. They say the exact same they, thing. They, they I see much, what well, not quite every year, but just about. Yeah. I see what you're saying, Almost but they're not year. saying that right now if they go to the league, they're going to be once in a generation. They, they're saying they have the potential to be. And I, as far as I'm concerned, I could completely see that with Zion. There would have to be many things he has to work out. Like, he, would, he would have to be in shape for 15 plus years he would have to be able to dunk on literally everyone which i think he can do he would have to be able to shoot the ball he would have to be able to dribble the ball he would have to be able to pass and those are question marks but he has Zion, shown Zion, at different points though, where we can do that question marks, what? Zion's, fundament- Zion's fundamentals in the game are way better they just get overlooked they're, they're really good they just get overlooked by his athleticism or his dunking True, yeah, he's but a, at, he's, at, a good, he's a good passer against much more athletic people. Okay, I don't know if we're because uh, they were even saying that about Blake Griffin and Aaron Gordon. Like they're super coordinated, and their fundamentals are there. And they get in the league, especially okay, Aaron Gordon. It. That boy looks okay. stiff. Okay, but look at look at this. Wasn't he getting buckets at the start of his career? Who, what? Aaron Gordon? Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, sorry. not really. I'm, I'm thinking of a different Gordon. Oh, but, this, 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 I'm thinking of a different Gordon, but. They um, when you get to the league out of college, the the lane automatically spread spreads right. The, the lane automatically open because the whole office is more spread. Blake Griffin, when he got to the league, when he was when he was in college, he was dunking. He was dunking. No, he got some really highlight dunks. So he got to the league. We all remember what happened. We all remember. We were like, what? Like no one expected that. They expected him to be doing the thing, but no one expected that. I think Zion Williams could be the exact same thing, and Blake Griffin had really good fundamentals. I think that's the most accurate comparison, to be telling to tell you the truth. Yeah, I, I think that's the most accurate day. comparison. Compare this man to LeBron James, this man. No, man, what are you talking about? This yeah, man is ridiculous. Blake Griffin. He's Blake Griffin. That's pretty much what he is. When you get to the league, you're probably going to see the exact same thing. Him oh. rolling. What, what, what kind of noise is that, man? <laughs> Like, no, he's 6'6". Six, six. He's 6'8", six, 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 but he's really 6'6". Six, six. Gonna, he's he's going to be taking dudes off the dribble, being able to get to the rim because he just got that crazy quick first step, banging on dudes. You know what I mean? 
what I mean? It's gonna, he's going to be Blake Griffin, and that's smaller. Was so, like, early in his career, not early in his career, so halfway to college season, like really early in college season, they were calling him like Charles Barkley. That's exactly what he's going to be. He's the, he's the mound round of region <laughs> on 2.0. So basically he's just going to be that fat dude you can't really do anything about? Do you remember Rico Gather of uh, Baylor, Baylor Baylor? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, you remember him? Not back in the day, but like yeah. just like what five five years ago maybe. Yeah. Yeah, just keep talking. <laughs> Who like kept getting all those rebounds, right? Like he was like a rebounding monster, a rebounding monster. This he Zion is going to be him in the NBA, plus more athleticism. But he has like exact same body type because Rico definitely went because Gathers definitely went and played uh, for football afterwards. Yeah. Um, he tried out for football at least for the Dallas Cowboys. But like this, like Zion's gonna be the exact same thing. He's gonna be getting rebounds. He's gonna be a big body dude. He's gonna be Glenn Davis for the forty inch vertical. Hey, I, we, uh, he's more athletic. Glenn Davis with the forty inch vertical. No, That's no, why I added that in the league. Glenn Glenn Le- Glenn Davis was that dude for a little minute he was. too. That's not how hard he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. No, I I'm gonna always use this one. Because I just think this is his uh his base. We're looking at a hyper athletic Draymond Green, bro. Yeah. No. Hyper athletic Draymond yeah. Green. Think about I it. Mean, if if nothing if yeah. nothing works out, I know you don't I know you don't like Draymond Green, but if nothing works out at his base, he's not that good of a shooter. Neither is Draymond Green. His athleticism helps him become a much better defender. He can protect the rim. And at one point. Draymond Green was doing that a little bit, but he was there, exactly. and he could. He has the potential to be able to guard your best uh, player just because his size is. He's a shooting guard body, well height, shooting guard height, in a four man's body. It's weird because he'll never be on the team that Draymond's on, and the 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 way they have to play a game, the way they have to uh, approach the game, I would say, is going to be worlds different. You know what I mean? If you take Draymond Green off of the Golden State, the way he approaches the game would have to be world different. So I don't think that's an accurate comparison because you, the situation is going to be so much different that you can't make the comparison. But I think Blake Griffin going to the the, the, the Clippers is an accurate comparison because they're going to be in accurate yeah. situations. Okay, also something I'm thinking about, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it gets talked about and I just don't see it, is just how hard Williamson plays. Mm-hmm. Like, you watch him play, he's, he's the dude out here diving for loose balls. Which, one, is kind of an occupational hazard because he's 280. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> um, but it's just, like, and there are a lot of dudes in the NBA who don't play that hard. Like, if he goes into the NBA and plays that hard, especially with his athleticism and the skills that he has, yeah. like, what he's like, yeah. who's going to stop him, really? Yeah, him playing that yeah, hard is the only true. reason why I say Draymond. A young Blake was playing that hard also, though. Yeah. A young Blake was playing that hard, for sure, for sure. You remember Blake in the first, before, especially Blake before Chris Paul came, Blake early on when Chris Paul was there, hard player. He was diving over the scores table, all kind of stuff, for loose balls and kind of stuff. Guess what? Occupational hazard, just like <laughs> I was said. This man became injury prone for a little bit for a reason because he was just doing a little too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I think not, that's why I'm saying that's the most accurate comparison that you can make. I, if you if he were to go into you know be a you know and I, and his his shooting is gonna get better. His shooting it's not horrible. It's just it's just bad. He is you know shooting twenty five percent from the three point line though. So. How much? 25%. Oh, okay. 5%. I was like, never mind. No, no. 5% is terrible. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was like, never mind. But the point I'm saying, it's, it's, it's going to get better with age and with, you know, practice and, the, you know, he's going to school now. But when <laughs> basketball comes to a job, hopefully it becomes, you know, better. Um, and hopefully it will. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. This whole once in a generation thing is said like once every two years, once every year. No, it's, like, it's, it's said about once a year. Yeah. I'm just like the only year it wasn't said was when Anthony Bennett was playing. And it was just yeah, like that, 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 <laughs> that, no. Yeah, there's like there's like I a couple mean, drafts to say where they would or Michael 
Carter Williams draft, uh, Ben McLemore's draft. There's like a couple drafts that say they never said that, but there's a lot more drafts that say this guy's the next guy. Like, why are you throwing? Why are you so intrigued about fighting the next guy? Let me. Here's another thing that bothers me. Comparisons of people in the NBA when those people in the NBA are still in their prime. So like, this guy could come in. He's going to be the next Durant. Durant's thirty. Hey, no, I'm going to be real with you. When we, If you don't speak draft talk, that's they're always talking about people selling. They're not talking about what they're going to come in and be immediately. So I remember they were saying that about Kevin Knox. And no one realistically think at this point thinks Kevin Knox is Kevin Durant. But he has all the physical abilities to become that guy. Now, is he going to? I still think no. that's accurate at all, by the way. Yeah, how no. about Brandon Ingram? Man? How about that comparison? No, I completely see. I see. That, I, see I, that I completely see more. it. Okay, it's like Brandon Ingram can't shoot for. He can't. Shoot. He has three points shooting. It's gone down, but also like we guys like like it is for every NBA player. Situational. If he has a team, he's that guy on that team from day one and continues to be that guy. He would be doing much better than what he's doing right now. You know what I mean? Because right now, even though he's like you know LeBron's not playing for the injury. He's human. In the back of his head, you know, he's like, LeBron is going to be back in a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's going he gonna to lose his touches in a week. Like, that has to be in the back of his head. Because he's just, he's, he, first of all, he's human. Secondly, he's like a 22-year-old human. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, he used to be that guy. But when, you know, LeBron's going to come back and take your spotlight pretty much, you're just like, you know, you got to deal with his, his, it comes with the territory. Shout out to Kuzma, though. Shout out to Kuzma. Oh, don't, don't, okay. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, my right, goodness, bro. How you, you, when you got an issue with everything, bro, just let me have a like, shout out to Kuzma, I, bro. I gotta, no, I don't got an issue with everything. I just have something to say about everything. Um, Kyle Kuzma is the most one-dimensional player that gets so much love that I've seen in, in a while. When I say one-dimensional, when he's not scoring, first of all, He's not a person going to go out there and get you 20, 20, 20 a game. He's not, right? Isn't he averaging he's like a, 18 right now? He can. Yeah. He he's, can. He's a, he, he, he was in college for what, four years? Four yeah. years in college. So, like, usually when you're four years in college, you see what you're going to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he, he's going to be an 18, 19 point player for his whole career. When he's That's not, not sport, a bad thing. But, he's, but, but it's not when you have other things to bring to the table. When he's not scoring, he's not doing nothing. And like, 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 he has zero intangibles. Like, he, what is it? I heard the other day, like, I was like, he has some kind of like uh, analytic of like three hundred and whatever players is in the NBA. Three hundred, what is it? Three hundred fifty, three hundred eighty, something like that. Yeah. He's like three hundred twenty when it comes to defense. He's garbage. And you watch him on games. He's an hazard on defense. Like, people were Donovan Mitchell was. Killing him last night, and it was embarrassing. Um, so that's just every night. That's almost that's not that's just last night. That's almost every night, no matter who he's guarding. Um, he did a pretty good job on Blake the other night. It's not very good. The only reason, the only score that forty points is because Lonzo was actually giving him the ball where he wanted it, and he was just making the shots. Yeah, but he's a much better catch and shoot player than he is, you know, in unless he's in the post. Then he is, um, you know, uh, uh, taking three, four dribbles, trying to hit those step backs, and all kind of stuff. Um, it's just, it's just, people are like, oh, Kyle Kuzma, he's so good. They need to do whatever they need to take him. I'm like, he don't do nothing for how to score. And he's you, not even that great of a score. You so, do know they, that that's what they say. Uh, that's usually like the knock. Like, all he can do is score, but every team needs a 20 point per game dude. Yeah, like, they're, they're, dude they're dudes like that all over the league. Yeah, but exactly. Like Lou Will. Lou Will? Lou Will, first of all, Lou Will comes off the bench. So, like, when you got a guy come back off the bench, he needs to, you need a guy coming off the bench to be that guy. Like, you need a guy coming off the bench to be that guy. Who's my starting? <laughs> <laughs> that's because that team sucks, bro. Hey, don't but talk, hey that's enough for LA. <laughs> no, I'm going to be real with you. I think LA is garbage, bro. I think LA is garbage. Bro. So what, Levi? I was talking to Al. Uh, we we ain't hear you, bro. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, look. All I'm saying is this is Kyle Kuzma's feeling. 
You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, people are like, oh, he's the best player. I'm like, he don't, even bring Ingram defend. Kuzma over yeah. here getting shook up. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm watching him play defense. I'm like, what is this? Like, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just disgusting to watch him play defense. He don't, he gets, he should be getting more rebounds. Josh Hart and Ronald Ball both out rebound him. Um, he should be getting somewhat some assists since the ball's in his hand so much. But he should be, but like, he doesn't even get that many assists. Like, what do you do with that score? You should do something. At least Dwayne Wade defended. At least Dwayne Wade hustled. Kyle Kuzma didn't even hustle. Josh Hart's a hustle guy. Kyle Kuzma would just be chilling. Like the, like the, oh, I don't want to get into that. But like, Kyle Kuzma would just be chilling. And if he scores, he scores. If he doesn't score, he, product, he, he produces nothing else that's beneficial for Lakers in the game. Okay. I agree. Don't care. Well, I, Hate the I, Lakers. I can't agree, but I don't really care. I'm a Lakers fan. You're supposed to care. This ain't my team. I just see this guy playing and annoys me. I don't know why you don't like Kyle Kuzma, but hey, it is what it is, man. All right, Philip, I got a question for you. What? If you could only keep one, who are you keeping? B.I. or Kuzma? Who? Brandon Kyle Ingram Kyle or Kyle Kuzma? I just said B.I. I was like, I don't know that European player. Um, <laughs> B.I. or Kuzma. Is this like for Lakers right now? Lakers right now in, um, let's say, the next three years. Lakers right now in the next three years. Who's better for LeBron? That's the question. That's not the question. That's who no, Who would no, you rather no, keep? But if that, no, if that's the thing you're saying, if that's what you're saying, that's what you're saying. If you're saying who's in the better for the next three years, you're saying who's better for LeBron. Bro, I just said who would you rather keep? On your on your personal team on your if you were GM, on my personal team, I'm definitely keeping Ingram for sure. Because Ingram, at worst, he's going to be an 18, 19, 19 point player at worst. But he also adds other things to the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, um, and, and by the things, I mean he at least he, at least he can defend. <laughs> That's all I need. Calvin, I, I saw the look on your face. Defend. I agree. I, 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 just, I, I just need a guy to defend. Kuzma just adds that. But for the Lakers right now. For the Lakers right now, with LeBron, who's is what you're pretty much asking is who's best for LeBron? That'd be Kuzma for sure. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. why he gets so much hype because they nobody else can score. That's all LeBron needs. He needs shooters and scores around him. But could they LeBron use him for a piece? Wait, what'd you say? I said, could they use him for a trade piece though? Coming up, if Kyle Kuzma <laughs> stays hot, <laughs> use who for a trade piece? Kuzma or Brandon? Uh, Kyle Kuzma. No, they they will they they I I don't foresee them using him for a trade piece. I foresee him doing whatever they need to do to keep him because of his game and how how um, it's stereotypically good for a LeBron team. I wonder if there's a great player on the team. They got to take that deal. They have to. Take I mean, it. I mean, they tried to get uh they tried to get what you call it last year uh Kawhi Leonard and they were like you know what we're not trading. We're not trading. <laughs> um, it's like, okay, that's a terrible idea. I mean, that's if, cool. it, if it's Anthony Davis, I would trade for Anthony Davis also. You know what I mean? I trade Kuzma. I trade the whole thing. But, like, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I doubt no one would be like, ooh, Anthony Davis, give me Kuzma and, you know what I mean? Uh, also, if I was Kuzma, I'd be upset about going to New Orleans. The Pelicans? <laughs> Gross. But Mardi Gras, bro. Like, but LA, bro, like, what, what's the what's the comparison? Mardi Gras, like, it sounds better. For one, it sounds better than LA. One one time a year it does. One time a year it does. It does sound. Like, it sounds better in February. And that's I it. I figured you could find some place in LA that's fun for Mardi Gras. No, nah, I'm good. You could. I'm good. I'm gonna take New Orleans over. Uh, that one specific day. That's in it. New Orleans, overrated. Did you go during Mardi Gras? No, well, St. Patrick's Day. Then you don't know what you're talking about, so. Overrated, though. Okay. But, yeah, uh, unless anybody else that not named Philip has anything else to add, because we all know Philip got something um, to add. As, while I'm thinking about it, because I wasn't here to talk about stuff last week, um, so my, my team, the Grizzlies, uh, who, who do we trade? I know we traded for Holiday. Marshawn Brooks. Brooks, and we've traded someone else in, like, two draft picks, I thought. 
Yo, I, y'all got I don't know. Rid of, rid of uh, Pearson too. Who? Mm-hmm. What is his name? Uh, he played for the Rockets. The white dude who shot funny, but Chandler no, Parsons. I thought it was Parsons. I thought Parsons got yeah. released or something. Or not, he didn't get traded. Though. Yeah, he, no, got he didn't released. get traded. Y'all just got rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we traded. I think don't call me on this. I think it's like Sheldon Mack and uh, Marshawn Brooks for Justin Holiday. Yeah. Well, we also traded two draft picks along with them, I believe. How do you yeah, feel about I'm, I'm looking that up. Uh, all right, double check it for me, Alan. But it's just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, why was it? Why, who convinced y'all this was a good idea? Hey, I'm gonna be real with you. I like Justin Holiday. Yeah. Um, he was traded for. I, I hate when they. Okay, it was Wayne Selden and Marshawn Brooks in two <laughs> first round. I mean, two second round picks. I feel like that's a lot. Why? Wow. I mean, okay. if you want to be realistic, Marshawn Brooks and Wayne Selden even combined are not as good as Justin Holiday. Uh, what are their stats looking like since you have it up? Did you say um, combined? Because I thought, yeah, Marshawn Bro- I thought combined, they were putting in about as many as he was on fewer minutes. Yeah, but Holiday is a really good defender. Um, then he can shoot. Then he can shoot the rock. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. Uh, I'm looking at Marshawn Brooks' stats for the season, he is averaging 6.6 points, um, almost an assist at .9, 1.6 rebounds, and Wayne Selden is chipping in um, G League numbers. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> five, five points per game, 1.1 assists, 1.3 rebounds, in a set of Sorry, guys, got to say it. A set of the prettiest eyes in the NBA. I feel, I feel, I feel weird looking at that man's eyes, bro. Bro, Google his eyes, bro. It's crazy. Um, Google, Google it, bro. No, I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy. I'm a KU fan, man. I'm a KU fan. I've seen his eyes for years. I'm not going to specifically Google his eyes, though. Bro, Google his eyes. It's cool. It, but um, yeah, he's he's literally doing what both of them are doing combined at eleven points per game, uh, two assists and four rebounds. Do you remember when Wayne Selden was supposed to leave, like one and done? Ten year Andrew Wiggins was at KU, and he was supposed to be a top fifteen draft pick. No, I don't remember that. He was supposed to be a top fifteen draft pick, but then like he stayed at some other years, and then he became this. Wait, he was supposed to be a top. Are you yeah, sure that was. wasn't like preseason? He was supposed to be a top fifteen because I remember uh, immediately we were like, "No, you need to be here a couple years, big, big dude." No, it wasn't. It was. Kelly Hooper was before Kelly. Yeah, he he before Kelly. Yeah, I think it was like what, oh. a season it was, before. It was years. They, he, he came in the exact same year as Andrew yeah. and Joel. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Strong, yeah. strong class. Strong class. Strong class that didn't do nothing because one got injured, one soft, and then the <laughs> other one super soft. So, like, he just didn't do anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but my bad, Calvin. We still in your spotlight. Go uh, ahead. No, nah, you're, you're, you're fine. I, this is, I, I don't keep up with Kansas necessarily to that degree. So that's fine. But is it? it was just like, why, why, why did y'all think it was a good idea? Right. Certain, like, and two draft picks. Yeah, the, the mortgage in the future, I never understand those type of picks. Um, two future first rounds, I don't know which year. I always think those are crazy. Uh, but Justin Holiday, you saw the stats. He has the same production as both of them combined. Uh, maybe you pay less money. In in both of them, but the salaries have to match somewhat. And uh, Justin Holiday, as far as potential wise, Marshawn Brooks is who Marshawn Brooks is. Wayne Selden, he's pretty much done as far as I'm concerned. Justin Holiday, a little bit of a more higher ceiling. Were you guys looking for a swing man? That's the only thing I could really think of. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe they were trying to consolidate players and upgrade or something. Cause it was, but it was just like. I was looking at it, and I'm just like, from a number standpoint, they do what he does in fewer combined minutes, like in fewer total minutes. So I'm just kind of like, why? 
and y'all, but y'all are saying like he's a good defender. Yeah, he's so a plus on defense compared to that doesn't quite show up. Yeah, that I'm just missing. But I don't understand trading them and the draft pick. Yeah. The um, world may never know, Calvin. I hope it, it just don't make sense. Um, anything? Y'all got anything else? Nah. I'm gonna try to watch this Chiefs game. That's what I got going on. Oh yeah. No, nobody cares. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Philip. No one cares. You can't say that. You better care. Again, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Philip, break us down. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, break. This is Philip. Leave my quiet, man. All right. Uh, this is Philip Dixon. Uh, you know. Uh, shoot. Yes, your boy, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, shout out to the Chiefs. Uh, beat these Colts today. Um, this Saturday. This beautiful Saturday. Uh, also, uh, follow me at, on Twitter, Instagram, you know, anything you can follow anybody on, you know, Phil Dixon, D-I-X-O-N, not C-K-S-O-N. Uh, yeah, um, don't got anything going on right now, but when I do, I'll let you guys know. All right. Calvin? Uh, I'm Calvin McGowan. Um, what? Follow me on Twitter at C McGowan I I. Um, when I have something, I'm going to be sure to plug it. <laughs> All right, Levi. Uh, yes, it's your boy Levi. I'm watching the uh, podcast coming out this week again. Dropped another episode. Uh, happy to be back. And uh, thank you for listening to Travel Loopers. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and close this out right I am Alan Pettigrew. Um, I guess you can follow me on Twitter because that's where I do all my tweeting and whatnot. That's that's my social. Uh, you can follow me at under, at AP underscore the underscore great underscore. <laughs> um, I just started working with a new platform called Lead, the Lead Sports Media. Um, did my first article and was featured on Bleacher Report. So go read that ASAP, you know, <laughs> feeling special and whatnot. But I also have another article coming out, if not later today, tomorrow morning, uh, about how OKC will be needing a backup big man as long as um, Nerlens Noel is out. There's no timetable for that. And Stephen Adams just rolled his ankle, so they really need to invest in something else. Um, I also wrote an article about Jamie Nareed of the um, Las Vegas Aces. Go check that out. She just had an amazing game with her overseas club. Um, and don't forget to follow us on YouTube and Twitter at The Traveling Hooper. And... uh Thanks for listening. Have a great day.